Chops Garage is proud to be sponsored by Car Vertical, the largest online database of vehicle information. Do you know the true history of your vehicle? Run a check now. Link in the description down below. Hi everyone, welcome back to Chops Garage. It's time to reintroduce story time. Now, story time is normally done from our big leather chair, but unfortunately I have had to take that home. Um, hardship, I know, because as a one-seater, it didn't really work with the garage because there was always one person stood, because when people come to see cars, there's normally two, which meant one person stood. So we have swapped that out now for a sofa, which is made out of an old car seat, which I thought was a bit more appropriate than just going and getting a, a random sofa. So that is uh, why we're just doing it at my desk. As you can tell, it's getting a bit cold in Chops Garage now. We've got the old neck thing on, we've got the hoodies on. The hoodies supplied by um, Home Built have done a load of these hoodies for me. I have got different sizes actually, so I'll put a link to their website where you, you can order through them if you want Chops Garage hoodies now. We're getting serious, aren't we, with merchandise? But yeah, I mean, you guys really enjoyed um, uh, story time. Uh, over the last few months when we've done it a few times so uh, a lot of you have been emailing with your issues on cars and car dealerships so I thought well let's have a chat and start going through them and see what your thoughts on what these dealers should do in these situations are. Now before we get started on all these cases I want to say that I am not trained in law I have gone to trading standards courses um, and I have had some training through previous jobs but I'm not going to say that I'm legally trained so you should take your own advice on all of these cases these are just I'm just going to give these as a personal opinion in this these circumstances just to protect myself so we've got one here from Luke he messaged me and he said that he purchased a 2015 Mazda uh, Mazda 6 Tourer now he purchased it from a dealership that agreed to deliver it to him because um, they weren't very far away it was easier for him to have that done so um, they delivered the car to him it arrived dirty hadn't been cleaned inside for some reason and obviously it was dirty from dr being driven there which you can understand but apparently it was dirty inside as well which i don't really get now apparently the dealer actually offered to give him some money to go and get it cleaned himself which i did find strange but it was very wet and uh, like i say the car was dirty and it wasn't until uh, so when the car came he did actually accept the vehicle um but didn't really have a chance to have a proper look around it other than it being dirty inside so it was a day later before he got a chance to have a look over it give it a wash check it over and it turned out that the roof uh, had lacquer lifting along the roof in little sort of potted marks all over it um i'm just obviously referring back to his email here to make sure i get it get it right um so yeah he, it's uh it's a very uh messy car in the end of it so he's had his detail to have a look at it give it a mop which is you know, reasonable to have a, a go at it first wouldn't come off and it actually needs repainting so he's wondering what his rights are as uh, as regards getting either a refund on the car or having the repair done so as always i'm interested to hear what you guys think so comment down below now we'll give it a minute Hop in the comments, put in there, in this scenario, what do you think Luke's rights are regarding the vehicle? Um, do you think he's entitled to a refund? Do you think he's entitled to a repair? Uh, I think at this point in his email, he had the vehicle for four days. And bear in mind, it's been delivered to his house. So yeah, pop in the comments down below. Let me see what you think on this scenario. So some of you have probably got this one already. Because Luke had the car delivered to him uh, and he didn't buy the car at the dealer's premises, it's classed as a distance sale. And under the distance sales rules, he can reject the vehicle within 14 days, giving no reason whatsoever. So Luke can just say, don't want the vehicle. It's not, he doesn't have to give any, he doesn't have to give any explanation at all. He just say, don't want the vehicle. And the dealer has to come and pick the vehicle up. I think some of you remember an earlier video with me where I sold a Vauxhall Corsa to a subscriber and it had an engine management light come up on it. He decided he'd rather not get that fixed and just give the vehicle back. So I had to go and pick it up and bring it back. So those are the rules. If you distance purchase the vehicle, like any distance purchase, you have the right to uh, reject the goods, send the goods back within 14 days. So Luke is within 14 days, he can ask for it to go back. Now, my advice to Luke was, as always, speak to the dealer first. I'm pleased to say 
the dealer has actually agreed to have the roof repainted for Luke. So as so many times in these cases, if you actually have a conversation with the dealer, you'll be surprised how flexible they can be. And he doesn't want to pay for transport to go and pick it up and take it back again and remarket it. So if the, the, the buyer is being reasonable, um, which in this case seems Luke is, a lot of the time they'll work with you. So great. I'm glad I got an email back from Luke to say that was the solution on it, so I'm glad to hear it. I'm sure most of you got that right in the, um, in the comments down below anyway. Now, what is important to note in this is that it is actually within a dealer's right to have terms that say um, what a reasonable amount of mileage within those 14 days are. So they could say that um, it's reasonable within 14 days you don't cover more than, I don't know what we're going to say, two weeks, say 500 miles and that over that 500 miles you need to pay a amount a pound a mile or whatever it might be i don't know what i'm just throwing out numbers there i don't have these rules written down so they're not mine but it is within the dealer's rights to do that so but those terms need to be set out prior to you purchasing that needs to be part of the contractual agreement that you understand that when you get the car delivered to you that those are the terms if you want to return within the 14 days you've only got 500 miles or whatever the figure might be after that you'll be charged on top you also have to return the vehicle in the condition received so obviously in this case it was dirty so obviously in this case it was dirty so the dealer doesn't really have a, a leg to stand on there but if you sent out a immaculately valeted car um, that didn't have any marks on it and you delivered it in that condition then you can expect for it to come back and again within your terms you'd want to have it written in there that um, there would be a revaliting uh, charge if it doesn't come back in that condition perfectly within the dealer's rights to do that and i don't see that as being unreasonable at all um, it can also be written at the in there that you have to return the vehicle to them that's absolutely allowed as well that you have to return the vehicle to them again as long as that is in the terms of pre-agreement but you've got to bear in mind the, the 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 dealer has has to refund you in full so if it costs them 300 quid to get a car delivered to you they will still be paying the 300 pound for the delivery because even if you drop it back the sale price of the car might have been 10 grand um, and you and to get it delivered to you cost 10 3 they have to re refund you 10 3 so they're still going to lose the 300 pound on that delivery but it could be written in the terms that you need to get the vehicle back to them that is permissible just so we're absolutely crystal clear though if you buy a vehicle from a dealer's forecourt these rules don't come into play you don't have an automatic right to return within 14 days unless the goods are faulty so in this scenario if luke had come and bought the vehicle had signed off that it was happy with the condition of it with the with the paintwork and all of those kind of things he wouldn't have been able to get this repaired so I had an email from mark and uh, mark's scenario was that his daughter had gone to a dealership and put a deposit down on a Volvo V40 uh, cross country, nice car, like those. And she put and she put a 500 pound deposit down on the vehicle. So she went to the premises, saw the vehicle, test drove the vehicle, looked it over, decided she wanted it, put a 500 pound deposit down. But the vehicle wasn't ready for sale yet. She saw it on the 29th of October, deal being that the car would be prepped and she'd pick it up on the 5th of November. Now, it turned out that there started to be some problems with the vehicle. It was driven, um, uh, test driven, in between her picking it up and taking it away. Came up with a fault code. Um, some various other issues came up and it had to be rearranged that the pickup was going to be on the 9th of November due to these issues. Came around to the 9th of November, dealership rings again. Unfortunately, there's another problem with the vehicle, something I think regarding the heater matrix, and they cannot deliver the car. It's going to be delayed again. Now, at this point, Obviously, Adam's daughter starts to lose a bit of faith with the vehicle. She feels like she's being mucked about it a bit, decides to pull out of the sale of the vehicle. And requests a refund on the deposit. At this point, the dealer comes back to them and says that because they're pulling out the sale, there's no refund on the deposit. So to make this clear, a dealer, when you come to a dealer's premises, and you view a vehicle, test drive it, and agree to buy it, if you put a deposit down, that is a contractual agreement that you are going to purchase that vehicle. If you decide to pull out, a dealer can retain that deposit. Now, obviously, that should be written within the terms of the order form that you sign when you order the vehicle. So in this scenario, the customer, Adam's daughter, is pulling out of the sale and saying she no longer wants the vehicle. So comment down below 
what are your thoughts on this? What are the rights regarding getting the deposit back? So comment down below. This is all about interaction. Get into those comments down below. Put your comments down as to what you think the scenario is here. Is, here. is she entitled to her deposit back, bear, bearing in mind what I've just told you? I need some like interim music playing, don't I? Some uh, some uh, lift music while you're going and type your stuff into the comments. <laughs> Perhaps you need to pause the video and then type your comments and then play again. So obviously, when the dealership refused to repay the deposit, Adam got to me, sent me across the email. So my first questions were: um, firstly, on the uh, order form, did it state that the deposit was non-refundable? And uh, what was the specific agreed date for pickup, original date for pickup? Now, on the basis of the response on that, we found that there was nothing on the order form to say the order was um, non-refundable and they'd exceeded the agreed delivery date twice. Now, again, I'm not legally trained, just to clarify that, I'm sure people will be jumping in the comments. But as far as I was concerned, that represented a breach of the contract they had. The contract was the vehicle would be delivered on the 5th. And it wasn't. It was delayed twice. And on that basis, because they broke the contract, not her, that she should get a full refund. So in this scenario, she wasn't just saying, I don't want the car for, for no reason whatsoever, in which case she wouldn't have been entitled to deposit back. She didn't want the car because the agreed contractual delivery date had been delayed twice. During this period, it turned out they actually hadn't stopped advertising the vehicle for sale as well, so they could have carried on gathering inquiries. So I told Adam to go back to the dealership and just politely point this out, that she wasn't just pulling out the sale, she's pulling out because it had been delayed twice as she now didn't have faith in the car and also, you know, we just they broke the contract. Turned out that the dealership then actually got back to him and they offered, or back to her, sorry, and offered to refund bar £100 which might seem reasonable. Um, but my point was again, that actually they should be entitled to a full refund because they're the ones that broke the contract, not her. She shouldn't be out of pocket for any reason in this scenario. Now I actually haven't had an update yet as to whether that full 100 pound has been refunded. Perhaps Adam will get in the comments down below or he'll, he'll bung me a message to let me know. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, that is a pretty open and shut case where, you know, again, just on a morals basis, on a on a good customer service basis, I'd never dream of retaining the money if I kept missing um, dates. You know, some of you have purchased cars from me. You've seen them on the channel. Um, they haven't been prepped. And I've said this, that and the other needs doing to them. Um, and it turns out that it's taken longer than planned. And I always try and stay in touch with people and let people know what those delays are. And all the time, I always offer to refund a deposit if they don't want to wait. Um, because at the end of the day, it's me that's holding things up, not them. I can't do it at a lower price point because I'm still getting the work done. Um, but no, I can refund a deposit and let them move on and find another vehicle. So as a dealership, I wouldn't expect in that scenario to, for someone to be um, to be as difficult as they were. Um, but it, um, yeah, I'm hoping they get, end up getting a full refund, which I think they probably will. Ah, just just realised I popped onto my Instagram. I did get an update from Adam on this one. Uh, he did have to actually threaten court in the end to get the last £100 back, but they did repay it, which is a shame because he said that their auto trader rating was 4.5, this company, for the sales of their vehicles, which is one of the reasons he was happy to go and buy from him. But since having checked Trustpilot, it's a lot, lot lower than that. And um, there's some more horror stories on there. So again, my personal viewpoint as a dealership is that was a really bad move to make. They should have refunded and they maybe could have moved her onto another vehicle or sourced her another vehicle, or even just, you know, the, the response would have been if anybody asked them about that dealership, oh no, you know, there's some problems with the car, but it's fine, they totally refunded us, rather than no, they hang on to the money. Because you just do appear then as money grabbing, that's all you're interested in is the cash. So I think that's a really bad look for them. So we've got another one here from Wayne. He, his mother bought a two, he emailed me about his mother buying a 2005 Honda CRV um, from a dealership. Very happy with the car, runs great, thinks it's a great car, but there was a issue that when they picked the car up again, a dirty car, they picked the car up and it was dirty, hadn't been cleaned. And again, this dealership offered uh, a bit of a refund for them to go and get validated. 
seems a strange set of affairs for me. That might happen with me if someone came to look at a car that wasn't ready yet, that they just happened to turn up and it had just come in. I hadn't prepped it or advertised it yet, but I still wouldn't let it go out without cleaning it. And if they wanted to take it away there and then, I'd say I'd probably give them enough to go and get it validated, but that'd be the only scenario a car would be dirty. Uh, the car came with three months warranty for, with the dealership and they're still within that period so um, they're still within the warranty that's been offered on the vehicle so remember when you buy a used car there's no legal obligation to provide a warranty because the consumer rights act covers six months the warranty will normally cover more than the consumer rights act does though because don't forget that allows for age and mileage on a 2005 vehicle um, any reasonable judge is going to say that pretty much anything on it is a wear and tear item um, so the warranty is probably, if it's a decent warranty, going to cover more items than than you might get covered if you ended up in court, to be fair. And although I don't think many judges are going to find in a dealer's favour, they assume were minted and um, knew everything about the vehicle before it went out the door, didn't they? So anyway, so they decided to get rear parking sensors fitted to this car, so they had them um, to help her with that. Um, when they had the parking sensors done, the garage that looked at it said, oh, by the way, your auxiliary belt needs changing. And um, as we've been going through the trim inside the car to fit the sensors, We've noticed that there's a, a leak in the roof that's getting uh, letting uh, water collect on the headliner in, um, um, near to the boot. So it must be at the back edge, I imagine, of the car. Um, and when they're driving the car as well, been getting vibrations through the steering when um, braking at 50 miles an hour plus. So it sounds like it could be a tracking issue or a bearing issue. So we contacted the dealership um uh, through email which is always recommended always do things in writing um it's nice to do things with phones and be friendly and so forth but if you do end up having problems later on it's really hard to prove anything so if you put it in writing there's no misunderstanding between two parties that's why most of the time i will put pretty much everything in writing just so that it just it means you have less issues because everybody knew exactly where they stood um um now the dealership is about 55 miles away from where from where they got the car um, and it, he was saying it'd be quite difficult for him to get the car because the shift work and so forth, taking the car back and forth, um, uh, costs would be quite high due to the fuel. Um, so it sounds like apparently when he first questioned it with the dealer, the dealer didn't really want to go to a local garage, which I can understand. A 2005 car, you put it into a local garage, who knows it's come from a dealership. For some reason, what happens in those scenarios is they decide it's their job to go over the entire car and recommend that everything gets done. Forget it's a 2005 car. They'll pick it to pieces and, you know, I don't know if they do it, I don't know if they do it to try and be helpful or if they do it to try and generate bills. I guess we'll never really know. So conversation with the garage, uh, Wayne offered to, uh, for them to, so conversation with the garage, Wayne was obviously trying to reduce the, the impact of having to go and to get the car and fetch it back again and said that they could come and collect it and drop it back or he'd meet them halfway. Now, theoretically, the garage is within its rights to ask for the car to come back to them to do the repair um, and for Wayne to get it there. They don't necessarily have to pick it up or cover any of the costs uh, cost involved in it. Um, but in the end, the garage obviously decided they didn't want that hassle and agreed to let it go locally. And it went into the garage and it had an alternator belt done on it, it had front discs and pads, and also the headliner was dropped to try and find a source of the leak, which was decided it was the aerial. So to be fair, sounds like the dealership is um, is doing, you know, doing the right thing here. I can't really fault that. They've tried to resolve all of the faults on a 2005 car. I doubt they had a huge amount of margin in either. So for them just to give the sign off to go and get that done, I think it's pretty pretty good sign that they've their heart's in the right place at least. Now, unfortunately afterwards, um, Wayne has noted that they're still getting condensation in the car. So whatever the leak situation was, maybe it's not being resolved. Could be residual water still actually clouding up, but uh, it, Wayne thinks that it's potentially not been solved. So he got in touch with the dealership again and they've asked him what does he want to do, which is fair enough. You know, you get to a point with some of the cars where you say, well, I can't carry on fixing everything. If you just rather return it, then maybe I'll sell it. You know, in my case, I might sell it as a known fault. I'll missed up if I can't resolve what the problem is and reduce the price accordingly. But anyway, what's happened in this scenario is Wayne has um, agreed to take the car back to them. They're going to drive to the train station. They're going to try and investigate what's going on with the leak, which again, I totally understand because if you just give it a, a blank check, but to another garage to go ahead with that work, they could they could end up, you know, running up a, a fortune. Now, Wayne's question to me is, if they can't resolve the problem and can't stop the leak, where does he stand with the refund? And secondly, it cost him £280 to get the parking sensors fitted. So does he get a refund on that £280 on top as well?
So again, pause the vid, hop into the, uh, into the comment section and put down what your thoughts are with that. What do you think? Would he be entitled to a refund for the park, cost of fitting the parking sensors? And would he be entitled to a refund on the vehicle? Now, if you haven't paused the video to do that, we'll need to have, I need to find that. Now, if you haven't paused the video to uh, do that, then you're gonna have to watch me drink a little bit of Coke for a second or two while everybody else is writing. <laughs> right. So again, here's my opinion on this. Uh, again, I'm not saying it's a legal standpoint, but from my understanding of the law, I'm gonna say this is, this is what it is. And uh, also from, a, uh, most of this comes from fairness. Like when I get people to sign my forms, I always say the same thing. You know, I have to have something in black and white, but common sense prevails. I'll always do what I think is fair. So firstly, car dealers have one chance to fix a fault. So if you highlight a fault with the car, they have an opportunity to fix it. You can't automatically get a refund unless potentially you win that 14 days in distance purchased it. Um, but if there's a fault with the car, you get one opportunity to fix it. If that fault arises again, you do have a right to refund at that point, but not a 100% refund. It's totally fair for the dealer to make a deduction based on the usage you've had of the vehicle or any damage you've done to the vehicle, or like say, you're not returning in the condition it was when it, when it left, as in it needs a complete revalet, that kind of thing. Again, these things should be pointed at, put in your um, contract of sale. They should be, you should be aware of these things before um, it gets to this stage. Now with this vehicle, this is a quite a difficult one because at 2005, is it acceptable to have misting within the vehicle? I would say it probably is. The rubbers around the door are old. Even if the, if the roof has been fixed, with a car of that age, you'll often get a lot of condensation that because the rubbers aren't new, they're not entirely sealing. Does that make the car unfit for purpose? I'd say no, unless the blowers aren't enough to clear the windscreen, in which case you're having to wipe down every bit of glass before you can head off. All of these things are a bit debatable. You're gonna end up in court and it's gonna come down to a judge to decide what. But in this scenario, the dealer didn't say that. When it came to fixing it, he didn't say, well, that is, you know, age of the vehicle, that's an acceptable thing for it to have a, you know, to have condensation on it. He's gone looking for the leak, he's potentially found a leak and he's tried to fix it. So. What I would say in that scenario is the dealer has said it's a fault. He's almost sort of admitted it's a fault by trying to fix it. So um, are subscribers within his rights to try and get that resolved? Now, as regards the parking sensors, no, no refund. The subscriber opted to have those fitted. So on my forms, it will say, it does say on my forms that if you have a refund, if you decide to make a modification to the vehicle or spend money on it, you don't get a refund on that. The dealer didn't opt to put the parking sensors in. Um, in fact, it could be argued that the owner has now modified that vehicle and changed it, so it isn't actually entitled to return on the vehicle. Again, that could become a bit of a gray area. It's kind of upgraded the vehicle in one way, but in another way, he's modified the vehicle. So I will be really interested in what your comments are down below. And I have to be honest, I don't know the exact legal standpoint on that, but I would suspect that if you went to a court the judge would not say that you had to refund that work. Unless they're being particularly difficult and said that the customer thought the vehicle was absolutely in fine working order, had that fitted and it turns out it wasn't. But the, you'd have to assume that the dealer knew there was a, that problem and had tried to hide it, which doesn't sound like it does. This is where it can get quite complicated and where I'd rather not get into a court to try and find out. But my advice was that no, he wouldn't be entitled to a refund on the parking sensor side of things. Now, in, in, in fairness to Wayne, he has said that the dealership is being very flexible. I mean, he found that the stereo wasn't working. He sent him out a new stereo, which he fitted as well. So they do seem to be bending over backwards to try and get the car right. But we have to be realistic about a 2005 car. You're buying something that's going to need work. Now, he um, did also mention as well, he did drop the headliner down again and have a feel. And there was um, damp there again. So it looks like perhaps it's not just a residual damp from inside the car, unfortunately. It's a really difficult one, this one. Um, I think in my, in my scenario, if I couldn't resolve that issue and the customer was really unhappy, I would probably offer a refund with a deduction for the usage I've been had today. I couldn't offer a refund on the parking sensors because I wouldn't want to be sticking 280 quid extra into a 2005 car. It would, um, 
it would eat the margin away and I wouldn't get I wouldn't be able to sell it for 280 pound more for having parking sensors it so unfortunately on that I'd have to put my foot down and say sorry I can't refund you on that scenario and in the end of the day this is going to come down to if they can't sort it and they decide that they don't want it anymore Wayne has to decide is that a fault they're willing to accept with the vehicle or not so um, yeah again I'll be really interested to read your comments down below but no you wouldn't be entitled to modifications or spend on the vehicle because you could go and do anything you like to can you put a whole new set of big alloys on it you know have uh, have a cam belt fitted to it and um, put a different exhaust on it have some areas of it painted the dealer could never be on the hook for all of that um it's out totally out of his control it's just worth pointing out in this scenario as well but you know when it came to returning the vehicle it if this fault isn't resolved that could be a reason for return but it couldn't be returned for things that have been closed off so for example the complaint that the brakes that there was vibration was solved with the brakes and the disc so that that fault was highlighted it was fixed and it hasn't been a problem again so you couldn't return for that reason you couldn't return for the car being dirty because you accepted a lower price to get it cleaned so those things are you know are closed off it's only that one remaining fault that um that really could be used and I say only really because the dealers kind of accepted responsibility for that already so I hope you all enjoyed that found some of interest or of help and I hope you all got down in the comments and had your say on it massive thanks for watching the video as always if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up so it can recommend the video to other people and if you aren't subscribed about 65 percent of you watching the channel aren't currently subscribed it helps me massively if you can go down below just hit that little subscribe button doesn't cost you anything just notifies you when new videos came out and like i said if you've got your own stories that you'd like to feature on the channel um, want some help with or just get off your chest you know get onto old instagram get onto the email let me know and we'll get another one out soon